the COVID-19 has had a very, very devastating impact on the health system in our developing member countries for a variety of reasons. Uh, first, the numbers of people that uh, were sick that required healthcare was quite significant and the health system could not just cope. We just did not have sufficient healthcare workers uh, to take care of all of them. Second, the healthcare workers themselves got sick and had to be quarantined at home. And in, in some situations, the healthcare workers died and it takes 20 years to produce a medical doctor. And that was really unfortunate. And three, the population was also afraid of going to the hospital. And so for people who had chronic illnesses that required uh, healthcare, they were not able to go and conditions worsened. Uh, so COVID-19 had a very, very negative impact uh, on the health system in our DMCs. We saw this as a threat uh, to the development gains uh, that the region has achieved over the past 60 years. And so as a development bank, our priority was to support countries uh, to ensure that uh, they have sufficient resources to have a system in place to manage uh, the pandemic. We provided significant financing, over $20 billion to support our developing member countries. The money was used for supporting the health system to provide stimulus package for people who had lost jobs because of uh, restrictions, uh, to provide uh, health care for people who were sick. Uh, so countries were able to get sufficient resources to address the problem. The second thing that we did was to provide knowledge. Uh, this was a new disease uh, and a pandemic that uh, we, we did not have a history. Uh, and so it required a lot of learning and knowledge across developing member countries so we engage with experts from around the world, from around the region, from the developing member countries themselves uh, to engage in a conversation on how best uh, to um, uh, handle and address all the aspects uh, of COVID. And then we had strategic partnership. We developed partnerships uh, with many organizations, uh, the World Health Organization, uh, which is, a, uh, which is a, an organization with a lot of capacity in terms of how to uh, uh, deal with uh, with pandemics. We engage with UNICEF, uh, we engage with academic institutions, we engage with some of the think tanks. We literally mobilized uh, all the capacity that was required uh, to be able to support uh, developing member countries. There are several key priorities uh, regarding uh, um, vaccine deployment of the vaccination program. Uh, the first is uh, to ensure that uh, there is uh, equity and transparency uh, so that the vaccines are not captured by only the rich and the elite. The second one is to ensure that uh, there's a good system of distribution of the vaccines because they require cold chain. So how vaccines are going to be distributed, uh, particularly in complex countries like Philippines, that's more than 7,000 islands, and Indonesia, uh, more than 17,000 islands. Third is ensuring that you have sufficient healthcare workers and looking at what other workers can come and help healthcare workers because many countries are vaccinating so many people uh, that might overwhelm the health uh, the health system. And lastly is uh, putting uh, uh, an IT system in place to track the people that have been vaccinated and if they have any um, what we call adverse events, meaning that uh, uh, some people, when they get vaccinated, uh, they might get uh, either pain at, at the, the site of injection or they actually might get fever or slightly sicker. So the health system need to know uh, if there's any complications arising uh, from vaccination. critically important uh, that uh, our developing member countries um, uh, either initiate or accelerate progress towards uh, universal health coverage. If you look at the countries uh, that perform better during this pandemic, these are countries that uh, have invested uh, in universal health coverage, uh, whereby they have primary care facilities that uh, have good trained staff and also have equipment that they are able to de detect uh, any infection at the very early stages before it uh, starts to spread. So I think that investing in universal health coverage is a, is a top priority uh, for ADB and we are engaging our development member countries uh, to be able to accelerate progress towards the goal of ensuring that everybody uh, is covered.
there are five takeaways. The first one uh, is a strong political commitment and public trust. Uh, in countries where the leadership came out very strongly in support of COVID and engaged the public in terms of educating the public, those countries did much better than countries where the political uh, leadership did not come out right at the beginning uh, to address uh, the problem. The second uh, takeaway is um, uh, preparedness. Countries that have had pandemics in the past uh, were better prepared because they knew exactly what to do in the event of a pandemic. And therefore, they were able to uh, mobilize uh, the whole government to be able to address the challenges to arising because of the pandemic. The third takeaway is uh, fast action. Uh, some countries were slow in reacting, and they started reacting when many people were already infected, and it was very difficult at that time to contain uh, the virus. But some countries acted very fast with very few cases, and they were able to lock uh, lock down only the, the very small uh, few communities that where there was infection. And we have many examples in our region, uh, the countries that were able to contain uh, the pandemic. Fourth is basically follow the science. What does the science say? If there's a science that people should wear a mask, people should be quarantined, uh, is basically implement what the science say. Uh, in many situations, there are countries that uh, were not able to apply uh, the knowledge uh, that was required to be able to, uh, to address uh, the spread of the infection. And lastly, is leveraging the private sector. The private sector is very significant, particularly in our region. How do you engage the private sector? They have health facilities. They have uh, the technical know-how to do research. Uh, and uh, to come up with uh, various interventions that are required. So a combination of public-private partnership to address the pandemic is very, very key uh, to ensure that um, the country is better prepared and also we are prepared for, the, for future pandemics.